I'm Brian Robinson, and I'm from Bradford. I'm a big fan of anime, Japanese animation, and that's what inspired these two drawings right here. This is Vampire Princess Miyu. She, uh, she has her own anime, and uh, sometimes she's seen with, with a, holding a little flame in her hand, so I thought I'd draw her that way and put a, bu and hold, put a bunch of candles behind her. Some churches have candles that, that the attendees are all invited to light when they're praying. And the Holocaust Museum has a hall of remembrance, which, which has candles that the visitors are invited to light in memory of the victims. So I, so I couldn't think of any better way to memorialize the victims of 9-11 than candles. This is Lisa. She's from an anime called Ark the Lad. One episode of that anime series features a statue called the Goddess of Peace, so I thought I'd draw Lisa as that statue. My name is Judy Zeno. Like many other Americans, I watched the events of 9-11 eyes glued to the television screen. To say it was frightening would be an understatement. Disbelief and horror are two words that come to mind. Amidst all the chaos, the bravery of the firefighters, police, and other first responders was what stood out the most. They were running in as others were running out. Shortly after 9-11, my son and other Hayward firefighters made the trip to New York City to offer their assistance. When things affect me deeply, I tend to express myself in poetry. I wrote this poem, Never Forget, to express my thanks and to honor those who gave their all that fateful day. It seems only fitting to me that my son, Haverhill firefighter, Michael Zeno, should be the one to read this for you. September 11, 2001, a date remembered by most everyone. The day we watched, eyes glued to TV, watching something we did not want to see. Our country was attacked, it was brutal, it was fierce. We had never seen anything so adverse. Planes crashing into buildings, those buildings aflame. Our lives would never, ever be the same. We felt the fear. We wanted to cry. There was no need time to wonder why. We were terrified. Our world stood still. We felt robbed of our own free will. As we witnessed a terror attack that day, we watched many people running away. Then we saw brave men running in, not out. That's what real courage is all about. They didn't have time to quiver in fear. Even though death was very near, they knew they were needed, there were lives to save. They were thinking about rescuing, not about being brave. People needed help, people needed care. They just knew they had to be there. They entered those towers to help others. What an extraordinary band of brothers. They could have, could have turned back and run away, but they all stood the test of courage that day. They pushed on, they all did their best, Rescuing others was their quest. 343 firefighters who answered that call never returned home, they gave their all. They were heroes and remain our heroes in every way, which is why we choose to honor them all today. We don't want them forgotten, for they were there. They acted with courage and not with fear. When desperately needed, they answered the call. Their ultimate sacrifice was giving it all. We honor them by reading each name aloud. Their brave actions made us all proud. They were heroes in every way. They are still our heroes today. September 11, 2001. Let's honor that day's heroes, each and every one. Hi, my name is Susan Paradis. I'm an artist, a writer and illustrator of children's books, and a painter of landscapes and portraits. I was also a teacher of art at Haverhill High School for 30 years. Just recently, I was asked to donate a piece of artwork to the Firefighters Museum for a special memorial service in honor of the people who uh, lost their lives in September 11th. And I thought about it, of, about doing an original piece, and then I thought, well, wait a minute, I have a piece that was started right around the time of 9-11, and it was not directly related, but I certainly felt the ache of loss of the people who suffered their losses because I was suffering the loss of two people very close to me at the time. 
I started with a totally black background and um, just wings and I had no idea where the painting was going except that I felt a terrible sense of foreboding. And when I ultimately lost my people who were close to me, I just put the painting away and I left it hidden away for approximately five years. When um, after that, my, a friend of mine sent me a quote that said, the best gift you can give to anyone that you have lost is to live your life with joy. And shortly after that, I pulled the painting out again because the, the people you lose never leave you. When I looked at the painting, I set the background on fire. And possibly that was recalling 9-11 as well as the heartache that I had. It was so raw still after five years. And then I was thinking, what can I do with the center of that painting? It's just burning. And then I thought, oh, the perfect symbol. This is not a symbol of the, of the spirit of the people who have been lost, but the spirit of those who are left behind. Those people who, like the phoenix in the painting, were burned up in grief and then rose from the ashes to live their lives again. Thank you. I'm Peter Guza from North Andover, Massachusetts. Uh, this painting is an oil on wood that I did 15 years ago. I was in college at the time at Lehigh University. My father was working at Aon Risk Services on the 105th floor of Tower 2 and um, he perished in the attacks unfortunately, although a lot of his co-workers did escape. And when I took a little time away from school, I returned and was taking a painting elective. We had an unusual assignment where we were supposed to combine two different concepts into one piece. And I took a New York City skyline and combined it with a um, invisible woman sort of concept that I saw in um, a famous painting. And I put this together myself and really spent some hours working on this that was late at night in the studio. It allowed me an opportunity to reflect on what had happened, kind of talk things through with myself, and um, found it very therapeutic. So it became a very special piece to me, and of course, um, you know, something that we'll keep for a long, long time. So we had this framed, and we're more than happy to share this with some other people. So if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to contact me at any time. As far as, you know, what does never forget mean to me? You know, to me, that uh, talks all about never forget what you had before you lost it. Uh, when I think about September 11th, when I think about my father, I really think more about the years that we had together when I was in middle school, high school, and earlier part of college, and not so much about all the time that we haven't had together since I've then moved on, uh, started a family, and had two children. So I think um, it puts things in perspective for everybody. You know, you have um, a limited amount of time and resources, and you need to be thankful for what you do have. So never forget what you do have. Never forget the great times you had with someone before you lost them. And I think that's a lot more important than focusing on uh, the tragedy that actually occurred on September 11th. Hi, my name is Kate Kozlowski Ferris, and I was a sophomore at Hamill High when the planes hit the Twin Towers on September 11th. In my art class at the same time, I created a response piece to the attacks that expressed my feelings on the situation. Uh, on the outside was the skyline of Manhattan, and on the inside was my interpretation of of all of us as a country rising together uh, through the terror to become closer and more united. It was 1986. I was eight years old. I had gone on a trip to New York with my mom and grandmother. And uh, I remember that day we had gone down to the World Trade Center and 
it's a really cloudy foggy day and um, I just remember being in the plaza area and there was really nobody there I thought it was really strange I think it was like a Saturday or a Sunday but it was just really empty and um, I remember just you know kind of looking up and I had one of those disposable throwaway cameras that you would back then send in and uh, develop and I remember just looking up and taking the picture and it ended up coming out pretty cool. So I'm here with a piece from Jay Shooty, who is a Native American artist out of Phoenix, Arizona. And I reached out to Jay several years after um, noting his name on a visit to the area and come to find out that Mr. Shooty made a small set of these flags out of copper inspired by the events of September 11th and I commissioned to work with him and we had uh, an ongoing correspondence and ultimately he made this piece to send to me in Boston and we continue to talk here and there. So the piece I have with me here is a hand um, hand dyed silk scarf and there was a number of these scarves that were made by a volunteer for the folks of the Aon family. Aon Risk Services is a large insurance brokerage that my father worked for and they occupied three floors very high up in Tower 2. Unfortunately, many of the Aon folks elected to stay at work after the suggested evacuation, my father being one of them. But as a result, um, there were a lot of folks in that group who were willing to reach out to one another and work together. And so we had this piece mounted and framed. So I have two small pieces here with me that my mother, Marsha Guza, made by hand. And these are mini quilts that she made for the 10th year anniversary from September 11th. And at that time, we did a large fundraising campaign for our family charity, the Phil Guza Memorial Scholarship. And we had these made for some of our primary donors and the um, family members who are involved in our scholarship. And these were made using a concept called paper piecing. <laughs> 